Hey guys, I'm Matt from Rosa Jericho and today we are going to do a review of Rocksmith, the latest rhythm game. Um, this review is going to be broken into three parts. The first part is going to be Rocksmith as a game itself. The second part is going to be uh, Rocksmith as a learning tool. So if you've never played guitar before, uh, if you buy this game, what is it like to learn from scratch? And then the third part is going to be a comparison between Rock Band 3, which also uses a real guitar, and Rocksmith itself. So let's go ahead and get started. So uh, what you need to play the game, uh, when you buy Rocksmith from the store, uh, inside the box uh, there's going to be two things. The first is the game itself, which contains the DVD. And then the second thing is going to be the guitar cable, which basically is a quarter inch mono audio plug at one end. And then at the other end, it's USB. So now the other thing that you're gonna need, and this is what makes Rocksmith really unique, is you need a real guitar. And any guitar will work as long as it has pickups on it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take that guitar cable and you plug the quarter inch audio end into your guitar and you plug the USB into your Xbox or PlayStation and now we are ready to go. So similar to the Rock Band and Guitar Hero games, the way Rocksmith works is you start off playing easier songs and you play in small venues in front of small audiences and as you get better you get to bigger venues and larger audiences. So let's take a look at playing a song. The first thing that you do before you play any song is tune. Um, this is important because since we're going to be playing along with the song we want to make sure that our guitar sounds right. Uh, some of the songs have alternate tunings such as drop D, so what it does is it brings up the tuner and then has you tune whichever strings need to be changed until you're at the correct pitch. So looking at the Rocksmith interface, what you see at the bottom are six strings and that is the neck of your guitar. So if you are a right-handed guitar player, the view that you're seeing is like what you would see if you were holding the guitar itself. So the red string at the top represents the low E string, or the lowest pitch string, and the string at the bottom of the screen represents the highest pitch string, or the high E. Now you can see the numbers that are heading towards the fretboard. Gems are going to appear above these numbers, and those gems tell you which string you should play, and the numbers tell you what fret you're supposed to be playing at. So we'll let the video roll and you can see a sample of play. The lines that you see represent an open string. So that red line that you see means play the low E string open. And then the lines with an X on them means palm mute. So that basically means you put your hand on the string and you mute it while you play it. Uh, What's really cool about Rocksmith and something that I really like is the fact that you can play many different kinds of guitar techniques and there's a whole section of the game that basically lets you become better at that, these techniques from palm muting to string bends to harmonics to double stops. Uh, all of these things are included in the game and this really sets it apart from other uh, rhythm games that are currently on the market. As you watch me kind of fumble my way through this chart, uh, what Rocksmith does is it starts out making the song really easy. So obviously right now I'm not playing what the guitarist is actually playing. I'm playing a simpler version of it. And as I hit more notes, the game will start making the chart more difficult by adding in more notes until eventually I'm playing exactly what the actual guitarist is playing. And this is kind of cool from the point of view of I've never played this song before, so 
trying to learn exactly what the guy's playing and watching all these notes flying down the track is pretty difficult. And instead, they made it to where they only give you a few notes, you learn the basics of the song, and then it makes it more difficult until you finally uh, reached what they call mastery, where you're playing exactly what the guitarist is playing. So this next song is one that I've completed mastery mode. So this is the full chart with uh, all of the notes unlocked. So uh, I'll let you watch this for a minute. And in the corner, you can see me actually playing this. to say a couple things about the interface. Um, the first is it's not particularly intuitive. So if you don't know the song, trying to read these little gems and then trying to see the numbers on the fretboard and figure out where your finger is supposed to go, it's pretty tough. If you don't know the song, um, I had a very difficult time sight reading anything. And then to make things worse, the fretboard actually moves so when you get to the higher frets the whole fretboard will shift and this will totally throw you off so say you're playing a song and it's at fret 3 and you're used to seeing that little gem in a certain spot on the screen suddenly the whole thing moves and you just have no idea where you are the other thing that bothers me is there's already kind of an accepted form for charting music on guitar, which is guitar tablature. And don't get me wrong, the Rocksmith interface looks very cool, but for just learning how to play and playing along with songs, guitar tab is something that a lot of people know, I'm familiar with it, and had this interface just been guitar tab to begin with, uh, I think I would have had a lot easier time learning how to play some of these songs. A couple other nitpicks uh, about this interface is every once in a while, and you can see it, there's text that appears that kind of tells you uh, you played the section perfectly or you've got a streak going, but it's basically impossible to read. Um, there's messages that pop up here, and I, to this day, I have no idea what half of them say. They're just, they're just too hard to read with all the stuff that's going on. Another thing is you don't get much feedback from the game itself. Uh, for example, when you do miss a note, it kind of shows one of the little gems falling off the screen. But beyond that, you really don't get much of an indication of when you're doing well. Um, a great example is, is I can never figure out when I've broken my streak. Um, there's no indicator anywhere telling me that I have a streak or that I'm maintaining it other than those little text messages, which I can't read anyways. So. One of the things that I found is, in order to get a better score, I don't know where to go to play better or change what I'm doing because I can never tell where it is in the song that I'm doing poorly. Once you've rehearsed a song and you've learned it pretty well, then you go into a performance. And basically what that means is you play the same exact song, except this time there's an audience and you're playing in an actual venue. Um, other than the fact that there's a, it seems like they add a whole bunch of reverb to the song, there doesn't seem to be any difference between rehearsing a song and performing it other than you get to see an audience and they clap for you at the end of the performance. Once you complete the performance, you get points for it, and then these points add to basically your career score. 
And as you get higher in levels and you get more points, you can unlock uh, new items such as different guitars, uh, venues, and effects pedals as well. And there's a whole bunch of different stuff in this game. Um, many different distortion pedals, reverb pedals, delay pedals, different types of amps. Um, if you're into guitar toys and you like playing around with different sounds and, and different effects, then this is definitely something that you're going to enjoy. So there's a whole bunch of other things in this game that I could go on for a long time that just I don't have enough time to talk about in this review, but I kind of want to cover the major ones. Um, first off, after you've played a song and you've mastered it, there's actually a master mode of the song. And basically what that is, is it's kind of like guitar karaoke. Um, you're in a venue, you see an audience, and you perform the song, but there's no note track. So it's just you and the guitar, and it's basically just playing your favorite songs to the stereo. Uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit, actually. Uh, I was a little thrown off by the idea of not seeing the note chart, but once I kind of got into it and started rocking, it was it's actually a lot of fun. Uh, it reminds me of when I first started playing, and it was just me and the stereo and playing to my favorite tunes. Something else interesting about this game is the Guitar Arcade. And basically what this is, is a bunch of mini games that you use your guitar as the controller. They're basically little Atari style arcade games. Um, personally, I think the jury's still out on whether these games are relevant to building your technique, but there are a couple, like the one you're looking at here, Scale Runner. Basically, uh, what you can do is you pick a different kind of scale and then you finger that scale while trying to get your little man or guy or whatever that thing is uh, further down the level. And the idea here is it's it's building muscle memory uh, and locations of what these scales are. So uh, there's some other games like Ducks, which from my point of view is purely just a click and twitch game. Uh, I don't know what kind of value for guitar playing you're going to learn out of this. But it's something that I felt I should mention. One thing that did catch my attention, though, is that the Guitar K games have leaderboards. And I thought that this was really odd, that these little mini-games have leaderboards, but the actual songs and the actual gameplay itself, there are no leaderboards. Um, there's not even much statistics, really, that you get at the end of a song. So I kind of thought this was a little backwards. 